been wanting to do this for a little while, addressing a small gap in information on the internet that we all have access to pretty immediately. Uh, when I was looking into what hardtail I was gonna buy, I already owned a bunch of Nolies, or two. I owned a first generation Warden and had that bike for like eight years and loved it. And I got a Chilcotin and moving to the Chilcotin, moved to the heavier side of kind of the enduro spectrum and I wanted something to fill in the trail gap. So I went with the Tayat. So to get into it, I needed to fill kind of a gap in my quiver for a long time with the first generation warden. I was kind of doing the one bike thing. I always had a dirt jump hardtail and usually some trials bike on the side. <sighs> but for trail riding, shuttling, and lift access, I pretty much rode the warden. When I got to Chilcotin, it was better in basically every way, except for what we're doing here. Just mellow trail rides, mellow climbs. I wouldn't say the Chilcotin, the 167, was less efficient, but it weighs four pounds more than my first gen warden did. It's about 38 pounds with the rear insert, middleweight tires. And a Fox 38, that's the Chilcotin. What I've got here, the Tayotin, obviously a hardtail, steel, size medium. I'm 5'10", whatever that is in centimeters. Uh, about 165 pounds, 76 kilograms, I do know that. Uh, I am, as my YouTube handle suggests, a relatively average rider. That being said, I know that term is relative. I live in Bellingham, Washington, Pacific Northwest, the United States, just south of Vancouver, just south of the border with Canada. And I have access to arguably the best riding on earth in a three hour circle from my back door. These trails on Galbraith that I'm riding right now in Bellingham for about a half hour drive from my house. And around here I am perfectly average. In my friend group, there's a handful of guys faster than me and a handful of guys slower. Uh, but just for context, where I'm coming from on the review, I don't really shy away from any feature. Most jumps, most drops, I will fumble through, fall a lot, but I don't necessarily break things more than average. Oh, and I've been riding my whole life pretty much. Raced in high school, downhill, but that was back in 2005 to 2008-ish. Uh, done no racing since then. A lot of hiatuses as careers and everything else happened. I'm probably in slightly below average shape. I basically only exercise the one to three rides I get in on a week, three on a good week, one or less on a normal week. Anyway, when I was looking to fill that void of kind of a trail bike, <laughs> cross country bike, down country bike, whatever you want to call it, I decided that I wanted to go with a hardtail and I was fairly certain I wanted to stick with what I know, although brand loyalty is kind of dumb. 
I think a lot of times you're loyal to a brand because it's good. Noli's have been very good to me. And so we went with the Noli Thai Otten. Uh, I built it up from a slightly used frame got from a guy in Canada who only sold it because he got the titanium version of the Tyotin. And I bought the frame and I built it up and it is built almost identical to the GX build that Noli offers out of the box. The difference being I put like a lower end Lyric Select, lower end in quotes, uh, on it versus like a Z1 or a 34. I don't know what their other builds come with, but it's a 160 mil front fork, but of the, you know, quote unquote basic trim. And then I put carbon wheels on it that were on sale. They're like race based vaults or next SLs. And uh, I put a 31 mil width in the back and a 28 in the front, because that's what Jensen had when they were running the sale. And I thought I'd give it a go. Again, I'm a little bit lighter weight, a little smaller. Probably also relatively average on the weight spectrum, but I've had no issues with them, hammering on them all season. I kind of built the bike up probably in late August. It's January now, or it's New Year's Eve. And the bike has been basically flawless. Has an all around trail bike, a little bit of do everything. Some kind of pleasant surprises coming to this hardtail. I had not really ridden non dirt jump hardtails basically ever. I've rented quote unquote trail bikes and you know 29er hardtails when I'm out and about, but never really played on a proper steel trail hardtail of this caliber before. And I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, it's probably a mix of modern geometry. I think the numbers and correct me if I'm wrong, future me, are almost identical to the Chilcotin, the, you know, third or fourth gen, whatever it's on right now, 2023, going into 2024. I think they're about to revamp their line. I don't know modern numbers, but up to 2023, Geo is almost identical, feels almost identical to my Chilcotin to ride, other than, being a hardtail. That being said, I am delighted by the compliance. It really does not feel nearly as jarring. I guess it's important to note I'm running like a 2.6 mid-weight specialized eliminator or butcher, whichever the front tire is, and the eliminator or butcher in a 2.3 mid casing on the back. Uh, no insert, but no problems so far. Running pretty low winter PSI, like 20 in the front, 22-ish in the back. Oh, I always forget here. I think I go right. And I've had no issues with, you know, general trail riding meets some uh, black trail silliness with some optional double black features, which I will record on this ride when we get down. Might be a little dark. Like I said, it's New Year's Eve. It's probably almost 3 p.m. and I'm <laughs> a third of the way up the hill. So by the time I get down, we'll see what we and you can see. about my preferences. I hate riding up fire roads. I love shuttling, 
But if I'm pedaling up a fire road, I'm wondering why I'm not shuttling. I know half the trails around here, maybe more, it's your only option. But I do like Galbraith for its pleasant little climb trails that pop down into decent black and intermediate, you know, blue trails. There's not a ton of stuff on this mountain other than like blue steel and certain lines on Mohawk that I think anyone would really consider double black. But there's, you know, little features here and there that are rated accordingly. But realistically, probably would be considered single black in Vancouver. And by, you know, like resort standards, Whistler, any of the other lift access places. Anyway, I'll probably be pretty long winded because I'm just climbing and I'm recording a review instead of listening to some podcast in one ear like I and many other people do on the climbs. <sighs> some kind of pleasant surprises, the compliance, uh, the efficiency should not have surprised me, but obviously it pedals better <laughs> than my full on enduro bikes. Um, it's 31 pounds, which is nothing to write home about. I could probably lose, it's 31 and a half. I could probably lose half a pound in tire selection if I really wanted to. Uh, there's probably some other spots where if I really cared, I could try to lose weight, but I think I built it basically for winter silliness and, you know, without any real regard for weight in particular, other than maybe carbon wheels. But that was for compliance and snappiness and ride feel as much as it was for weight. But I've been thrilled with climbing on the bike. It's general trail manners. I heard in some of the other reviews that it did not like undulating terrain so much as it likes going uphill and then going down. I don't feel that way. And I'm riding it on the higher end of the front travel suggestions with 160, so it's rather slack. Probably 63-ish, maybe 63 and a half degree head angle. 76, 75-ish seat tube. I don't remember the reach. I've got a 40 millimeter stem, 35 mil bars. None of the geo numbers are like wildly modern. It's not super long chain stays. I think they're slightly short, but not insane. Same with BB and uh, overall reach. Uh, but the bike has been, for me, just an amazing all around trail bike. I wouldn't hesitate to take it down stupid stuff slower and more precisely, but you know, for whatever reason, my other bike was out of commission or just for a fun experiment, it'd be pretty funny to take this and try and ride everything at Whistler. Some of the other legit YouTubers have done that. Van Can, and, um, I don't remember if it's Hardtail Party. Forgive me, bud. I'll add an annotation for that guy. He's a killer rider. He also rides a Tyoton. He also lives in Vancouver. I think his is red. I couldn't find a ton of info about like weight, fully built, honestly, and I'll put it on a scale later. It's about 31 pounds, 31 and a half. Got a water bottle cage on it and tools, probably adds another pound. Uh, but, you know, if I take that stuff off, I just carry a little tool bag with a pump and tube and multi-tool in it, riding flat pedals, like raised face Atlas or something like that, 180 millimeter dropper post, uh, carbon bars and wheels, but that's the only carbon bits and that's just what I had. Oh, Magura MT5 brakes, they were a pain to set up. 
and I did have to go with huh, steel pads or metal centered pads. I just went with something on Amazon. Not even golfers, but just, you know, unnamed quote unquote downhill Magura MT5 pads in metal compound. And they're split, they're not the big single pads. And that's a huge upgrade. They're fantastic now, but it took a long time to get there. All right, go for a quick little hardtail lap down Evo. It's a little muddy, it's New Year's Eve. Beautiful sunny day today. Yesterday it rained like crazy. Trail starts with some very rollable or hittable little doubles. Kind of a hip there, and then a little shark fin. Oh, it's a little sloppy. And I'm on the hardtail and I'm kind of slow. But this trail showcases a nice mix of intermediate to advanced terrain. Ooh, ooh, sloppy. <laughs> but it's one I'm familiar with. A lot of you probably are. And it's just a good showcase of how capable a modern hardtail is. This is kind of slick, oh, but very doable. And this is a pretty famous feature, the Stinger. You can roll or drop this. I'll drop it. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Small drop. Small drop. Caseable double and cased. These are goofy. Roll them or drop them. They're rough to drop on a hardtail. Oh, so I kind of rolled. Ow. Oh. Aim for the berm. Irish death. Irish death should be a really good test of the hardtail. It's kind of the techiest trail that we have at Galbraith, techiest downhill with a couple little optional jumps. I've ridden it on the full sus, never on this guy. Ooh, and we're off to a rough start. <laughs> little sloppy, not too bad, but the top is not too bad. <laughs> Sloppier than I've ever ridden it. But manageable. Oh. Feel like that last section demonstrated that I'm still not on an enduro bike and I am statistically average in my ability, so that was rough. Got through it, but it wasn't fast or pretty, nor was that. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for context, for those of you who've never ridden this trail, nothing overly steep, but it is chunky-ish. Made chunkier by the slop. Uh, 
There's a little gap up here coming up. We're gonna give it a go, I think. The gap is not bad. It's just blind and it is sloppy today. And we're going over a stump. But let's give it a go. Whoa, slipped the pedal. Oh, but we still made it. Not bad. Whoa. And that is Irish Death. Radical Dragon, kind of in between evolution and Irish Death in terms of difficulty and chunkiness. Oh. A little case. that but still managed to mess that up <laughs> these roots are slick today and I'm tired Trails are sloppier than I was expecting generally. You can hear that in my brakes. All right, up here, it's a nice little rock roll, two step down thing. It's pretty doable. Little drop at the very end. Oh, step up. Here's the step down. I can stop the brake. And then back on them hard. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and the last section goes into a kind of wall ride thing that I'm not very good at. Into a little double, do a little step up, hip. It's wet today, but I managed. Oh. Oh. Not smooth, but we made it. Oh. All right, in summary, if you're considering the Nolly Tayatin, is either a trail bike alternative or a winter hardtail or just a hardtail for trail riding or to try something different from a short travel full sus I strongly recommend I love it I can't see anything about it that would change some people would probably like replaceable dropouts for compatibility it is 157 spacing on the rear hub which some people don't like my other bike is too so it works for me but I know some of the bike packers would love some options otherwise that's a flawless trail bike do everything bike give it a go